Here is an orange ink by Aurora Orange. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. A great basic orange with a little tone variation by pen and absolutely no shading at all, which is how I like my orange inks to be. As an orange, this might be a bit much for a consistent full page of writing as it can become a little bit bright on the eyes through the whole page. But I use orange very frequently as my second color on the page, and I use a lot of it. Here's a solid orange that though I only have a sample, I would love to really have a bottle of it. I think it performs very well. This is after editing me, and I'm coming back in, and I'm letting you know that my bit about no shading was really wrong. It does shade. It shades very nice, and it really kind of looks like a sunset. The pen for today is a Nemesine Singularity. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with an extra fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine nib, we have a very nice orange on the page. It has no feathering, it has no spread. There's kind of little bits of shading. You see slightly dark areas, like if you see gleam on the first line, it starts a little darker and lightens up just a little bit. Where tense on the third line, it's just the E that is a bit darker. Looking at the medium nib, it is only a tad bit darker. It has no feather, it has no spread. It does shade, when it's shading, I think it's doing a very nice job. It, the, the extra fine only had a few spots of it, but here, take a look at stiff on the second line, starts lighter, becomes darker. Himself is darker to lighter in the middle and darker on the end. Where Desperate on the third line starts as a nice mid-tone, lightens up at the A, and becomes a bit darker at the TE at the end. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we do get really good shading. I've had to re-record this particular part for it. There, the, the shading really, it didn't hit me at first, but then it did after when I was looking back at everything. And it really gives very much that sunset look. Look at strength on the second line. I often get a lighter tone at the bottom, darker up at the top looks great same thing happens with must on the second line i'm really liking the shading that i'm getting from this stub looking at the back of the page we get no bleeding and no ghosting like most inks this one comes in a bottle this is how the pilot custom 823 fits and here is the pelican m1000 here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 7 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a tad bit lighter than it was with the extra fine. No feathering, no spread. It does have a little bit of shading. You see it in kill on the first line, a little bit darker K. The rest is largely the same word. You get occasional darker letters like the T and not on the third line. It's there, just not real noticeable. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, a little bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with no shading. Now, the tone here kind of reminds me of orange sherbet. 
And I really do like orange sherbet. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone as the medium, tad bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we do get shading. Take a look at Tried starting darker, working its way lighter in, darker again at the D. The same thing happens with Was a little underneath that, where the second part of the W is a little bit darker, lightens up into the A and gets a little darker in the S again, where Loss, just down at the diagonal again, starts lighter and works its way darker. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine nib, I was very interested to see what the tone change would do with this, and it did nothing. It is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It has no feathering. It has no spread. It has um, moments of shading. I think the moments of shading show up a little better on this toned paper. You see it in Weld very well on the second line. You see it in Bilbo's Heart on the second line, even endless on the third line, the LE right in the middle is a bit darker than the rest of the word. So some shading I think with the extra fine is coming across a little bit nicer. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine. It is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It has no feathering. It has no spread. It has shading standing out a little bit better, a little bit nicer than it did on the Claire Fontaine, which it really didn't stand out a whole lot. But take a look at the first line hard. The H is much darker than the rest of the word. It lightens up, but the downstroke of the D gets much darker, where stone starts darker and works its way lighter it's it's pretty good i and although the shading isn't huge and stand out it's definitely standing out better than the claire font looking at the stub nib it is the same tone as the medium the same tone as the claire fontaine it has no feathering has no spread has no shading this time the shading is really not there which kind of surprised me in this case though i can deal with the fact of this very readable orange on this yellow toned paper it stands out nicely i think and isn't too hard to read Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get the same tone as the Claire Fontaine with no feathering, with no spread, with no shading at all here in this. And this is where the vertical lines really do help me understand an ink a little bit better about how I would like it on the page because this is a brighter ink and those vertical lines, there's no disappearing at all. I'm very aware of them the entire time. So if using a quad ruled paper, I'm not sure that this would be a great ink to use. Looking at the medium nib, it is a bit darker than it was with the extra fine, quite a bit darker, a little bit lighter than we had on the Claire Fontaine. It has no feather. It has no spread. It certainly shades a whole lot better than it did on the Claire Fontaine. Take a look. It jumped. starts darker. In the middle, it does this back and forth between the light, lighter and darker tones 
the whole rest of the way. Same thing happens with three directly underneath it. The H is very dark, but in the entire rest of the letters, there's a constant tone shift back and forth. Known, just down, that has that sunset look. The low letters are lighter. As it gets higher up, like on that K or at the top, at the end part of the N, darker and looks really good, really shows itself on it right next to it. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just that tad bit lighter than on the Clairefontaine, with no feathering, with no spread, with very nice shading. Now, the color itself is not coming through as nice as it did on the Clairefontaine because of those vertical lines. The Clairefontaine, it really had that sunset look. It's here, but it's broken up by the vertical lines. Now the shading is really noticeable and gorgeous on the word skull or passage or even a golem. Look at how golem fades from an orange to a almost yellowish kind of tone and really that sunset look to it. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diatramentus Red Orange. Here is Elixir Tangerine. Here is Pilot Yuyaki Sunset. Here is Thornton's Orange. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just as dark as it was on the Clairefontaine. I think it, the tone of the paper makes this ink look a little bit nicer, but the vertical line distracts me from what's on the page. If I could get this paper with no lines on it with this ink, this would look absolutely fantastic. No feather, no spread. There is a light peppering of shading throughout. It's the color here that I tend to be most interested in because it's orange is my most frequent second color for editing. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine quite a bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine, flatter in tone. It has no feather or spread. It does shade. I think the shading here is showing up much better than it did on the Clairefontaine. Take a look at tunnel on the first line. The L is much darker than the rest of the word, but directly underneath that, what? The H and the T both stand out. The H is a little bit lighter than the W and the A. Strange, but the T a bit darker. And that makes for a very interesting word just in itself right in the middle. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, bit lighter than on the Clairefontaine. With no feathering, with no spread, with shading and the shading is coming through very nicely not as standout sunset but definitely there it's a little bit flatter tone but look at stop the s is lighter the t gets a little bit darker lightens up for the o darkens for the pp in the middle lightens up again until the end of the d the downstrokes really are helping to bring out some of the, the shading this ink has the stub is really helping it stand out nicely Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Great for students. While it's nice to see inks in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements this color on the page. Here is a blue ink by KWZ Azure number no. five. Here is a brown ink by Monteverde Joy Sepia. Here is a green ink by Graf von Faber-Castell of Viper Green. Here is a purple ink by Monteverde Purple Rain. 
The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was with the Claire Fontaine. It does feather, does spread, does not shade. It is orange on the paper. Is it usable? Yes. Would it be my preferred to use? I don't think this is in itself bad. I think what we're getting here is very manageable in terms of its feather and spread. No shading is actually a good thing. I think this is a pretty good match for what we have right here. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as it was with the extra fine, just a tad bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine with no, or sorry, with feathering. You see it all over. Really, the word but the B is kind of jiggly the whole way through for but still is not standing still. It's got a little blur to the T. The spread is what makes this really a little less usable, but it's not, it's not the end of the world if you really must use this. It does shade very well and almost in a planned kind of way in the first line looks a little darker. The second line looks a little lighter and as a line gets darker at the echo, darker at the echo where behind at the bottom, the H of hind, bit darker than the rest of the word, making it look pretty good. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, little lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does feather and it does spread. Both of those should not be a surprise since this is copy paper. It does shade, which should be a surprise since this is copy paper. I'm hoping it doesn't bleed through. Uh, the feathering and the spreading I do see as a manageable thing if you really must. I don't, I don't think this is too bad what I'm seeing here. Looking at the back of the page, all four of these spots occurred on the stub. Nothing for the medium or the extra fine. And I'm having trouble picking up that paper. Seeing the back of the page, you see there's a lot of ghosting. I don't know that you could write back here and comfortably be able to read both sets of notes, but it is copy paper after all. So what nib and pen do I recommend using for this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. I know I started with there's almost no shading, but looking back, I was completely wrong. It does shade, not like it's a huge standout way, but when you go back and look at it and have had that little break, the shading is definitely there in a nice way. While it always looks good, and I really do like how it looked from the fine nib, it did shade less, but that's okay because that works for me for oranges. It's the stub that really kind of brought out that sunset look to this shading, especially on the fountain pen friendly papers. So it just draws me in and I go for a medium to wet flow stub just for that with the shading. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching.